just been out taking pictures of the super moon last night so here it is amazing moon that's the tire for the mower yeah, yeah. tramp all has just arrived not bad before nine o'clock as well Ooh, goodies Shaped like a... guess what's in there that's today's quiz question just like Christmas welding helmet oh Mer like Merlot head like what's that one mirror mirror for the Merlot some lifting straps that is a 56 ton recovery trap six strap that's six meters long that's a pin some washers lifting knives paint for the spreader stuff to dissolve oil some tire levers fan belt tire for the mower and an inner tube Oof. don't think that's going to go anywhere today now uh, morgan's got covid as well so his girlfriend had it andrew's got it and now morgan's got it so i know what it's like because i had it a few months ago so a bit of a shame i have no appetite to go and finish the field with that plow though so i think it can stay there for now got a problem with the barn owl the trolls up there so we're just going to see if we can get the basket in the doorway and boom us up there had to climb up the basket and walk along here it's not actually that high but they're all lit up and I was using the dustpan and brush to tidy up around the skip just take my boots because I've got to walk across the pile so I don't fill them up with OSR Go to the back of the shed now and check where the sim card is i'm guessing that power supply's failed again failed a few years ago there's no light on there is there hopefully if you supply it under the rungs i can reach up that's better see what's going on up here Yeah, green light's not on on that, it must have burnt out. You tidy? I've done this twice, and I carried a ladder. I had one of these power packs fail before. Anyway, the fuse is gone in this one. Now, if I put a fuse in, will it work or is it cooked inside itself? I'll go and get a fuse and see what happens. That one's obviously knackered, but because Ian's a hoarder, it's got a vast array of power supplies. So we found one that we think will do. So I'm just going to put it in my hoodie pouch climb the ladder and plug it in see if it works really handy these hoodies available online we've now got a green light that's a good sign the channels have arrived for the gutter for Wellbrook quite heavy they don't look it but they are but I suppose individually they won't be Rob's giving the uh, fast track a quick valet before he delivers some chip and he's got some hose for the fence how much was it? Six quid, that's the nearest they've got. Oh, we'll try it and see. That's uh, perished in places. Rob's changing these hoses now, so hopefully yeah, it might stop getting here. And apparently this, they're all a bit slow for pumping. If you pump them fast, they don't work. Come to check if the OSR's coming up. Bit of fly tip in there. Why they couldn't go the tip? It's what, two mile away? There's quite a flush of grass weeds. But well, this is what we want. No SR coming up nicely in rows. Have to knock this grass weed out as soon as we can because that'll start stealing some of the nutrition that we've put on with the dio, uh, bio solids. Can't see any slug damage, which is great. Pleased with that, looks good. Yeah, good stand at all. It's pretty amazing, really, that two kilos is the hectare 
results in a plant stand. Be nice if we only had to drill wheat at that sort of rate. Looks like a leaf beetle's pierced a hole in that one. That one might have a leaf chewed three more. <laughs> this is a scandal. Subway cookies used to fill the bag and now they don't. It's not that funny. Prime the last content. supper. <laughs> Dad and Richard are filling up the bag with the seed snout. Available now online. Yeah, my uncle Richard wants some wheat for the shoot, so we're just filling some bags up now with the seed snout. Saves uh, shoveling. As you can see, off the Weybridge getting wet. It's now started raining. I was hoping that we could have cut some beans. Yeah, I'm gonna get the mini Merlot now to move. Some of these bags have got four, four hoops on them. So I'm moving with the pallet forks rather than the seed snout. Lifting brackets on the Merlot. 500 kilos in this one. One of the bags must have been a bit perished and it's ripped. So we're just gonna pick it up with a grab now, drop it in the bucket. Cut it completely open and then start again. He just puts the bucket underneath now. There we go. Not spilt much. It's the annual what round up all the fans that disappear. We're on top of this uh, tunnel here, along with other random half fans that we want to keep warm and dry. So we'll stick them on the bucket, get them all ready in a week. A bit closer, Liv. That'll do. Ian's packaging a load of seed socks up on the way to Spalding's. I'm just going to go get an ice pack to um, check that the heat controllers for the fans in the wheat store are going to work. So we're just testing all the fans now, we've found them all. And I've got these little heat controllers that you use for, I don't know, reptile huts or something like that. And they can be used for heating or cooling. So what I do is I set them for 12 degrees, leave the temperature sensor out and then plug them into the heater side of it. So if the temperature drops overnight to 12 degrees, it thinks it's turned the heater on, but it's not, it's turned the fan on pull that cool air through the wheat. Once we get the wheat down cold enough, then I swap them round and I put the temperature probe into the grain. And then if you get a cold night, uh, sorry, if, if you get a hot spot in the grain, it thinks it's turning on a cooling fan and it'll pull cold air through it. But the idea is, is it only turns on at night when the air is cold to pull air through it. This arrived in the post from, we got sent to Brookhouse actually not here. So it's, I think it's the spread is the same as the ones the guy was spreading line with and um, a couple of coats as well so thanks to terry riley business development manager of agri spread in ireland um, i'm sure one of the coats will fit me dad it's a bit big for me my other one might fit morgan to be fair thank you i've right, got the ice pack under here that's 14 degrees going to drop as soon as it drops to 12. hopefully that fan should turn on oh it's come out Good job I had an Amazon delivery yesterday of uh, frozen stuff. Let's see. Counting down. Oh. It's not right there, is it? Maybe I've set it up wrong. Or is it a delay? I'm going to really have to get the instructions. I set all the other ones up last year, but this is a new one. And I guessed it. To be honest, I think I might have set the differential to 12. So depending on what the temperature of the ice pack is, it might not turn on until it goes below zero. Um, we'll see in a second. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. There we go. Yeah, that's what I've done wrong. I've set the, set the temperature to 12, the differential to 12. So I'll change it around now. Put that under your armpit now, it'll warm it up. <laughs> then it should start to turn off in a second. Yeah, it's not. I've got it wrong now. But 
we're going to turn off. There you go, turns yeah, off at 12. at 12. Right, yeah, it's because I set everything to 12. Right, it thinks once that drop, I've reset it now, the temperature differential is set to 12 instead of 2 degrees. So once that gets to 10, that turns off. Then, if we warm it up now, fan turns off. So the idea is now at night when it drops to 10 degrees, that'll turn on and when it warms up to 12 it'll turn off. Penguin. Not started recording yet. <laughs> well, if you're going to thank the fella for the penguin, you better what, thank Wait, 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 what's, what's his name? Ian. Ian yeah, Hudson, thank you for the penguins. Oh. Uh, we're having a penguin break now. Yeah. And a Sam Pagriag, where have they gone? Sam Pagriag, Break. And also, Thanks. someone brought some beer before, didn't they? <laughs> I forgot his name. Sivan Truck Sales, he works for. If you want a truck, he's in Denby. There we go. go. He's bought us some beer, so go and buy a truck. That seems fair. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Hannah's taping her pants up so that we can live. live so that we can they've only been here three months so that we can go on the pile of grain putting the fans in got the back row in now just another row here another row there that was the hardest one you tired so a few of these have had the fans dropped on them and it's chopped the cable for the temperature probe so I'm just going to join them up now get them working we go just testing it works for a fastening up completely. I need to change that. So hold down set and then it'll say target setting. Change that to 12 degrees. And it's set. It's not flashing. There we go. Set up. Hannah doesn't know I'm gonna do this. So it's your last day. What have you enjoyed the most? Everything, the variety. Um Parting, chat's driving, not knowing what's happening one day to the next. <laughs> it's all very exciting. What's been your favourite job? Um, I don't know. Probably being out in the fields, that I need the chat's driving would be the best bit. What's been the worst bit? <laughs> um, climbing through all this wheat to put all the, all the fans in. <laughs> <laughs> um, what have you learned? A lot, <laughs> a little stuff of that. <laughs> um, I've learned a lot about farming, a lot about what goes wrong and how are you overcome it, and there's sometimes you can't. Um, I've learned that, I don't know what else. I've just, I've just learned too much to remember. Um, you should have paid me to be in it, shouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> loads, learned loads. There um, we go. Yeah, about harvest, about farming. Very and practical now as well. <laughs> and she's off to Australia in October. <laughs> Just putting these temperature probes in now. We checked them all working before by calibrating by putting them all in the same piece of grain. Put them now in the highest points of the piles. You see how high we've got it. Because that's with the trailer at the roof. Stood right on the top of the pile now. So it's about 1.2 million quid worth of OSR in here. So just put these sensors now as far away from the fans as possible in the midway points and then that'll measure the temperature and if we get cold nights and the temperature of this is warmer these fans will turn on automatically and pull cool air for it through it, refrigerate it, just like what we're doing in the wheat store. This is kind of completely automatic. It's all done by a computer up there and over there behind me. There was the other ones, each fan itself got the temperature sensor on it. Missed it, I was too slow, that's the last bit of OSR put in the shed for this season, hopefully. Now put the pusher in the shed, out the way. Best place to store it. Rob's going to get the boom out of the way before the door comes down. Just. I was just about to say, it looks like it's going to throw it down. And we have got spots on the window already. Last birthday yesterday. I don't know. Hannah's going to do the birthday bumper, being out it's her last day today. Liv's actually here tomorrow. I'm going to time lapse so you can see how much work goes into the birthday bumper. Uh, 
Betty, go. <laughs> um, so last birthday bumper is my last day today. Um, we're on the sprayer because it's in fact the sprayer's second birthday. Yeah, the Bateman <laughs> is two years old. It was registered on the 1st of September, two years ago. <laughs> um, so we've got Will McMillan is 49. I th Pip think that's from the Isle of Man, I'm not yeah. sure. Pip Goucher, Alistair Ingram Street. I think we got the wrong name on there yesterday. Um, Wuffler is 60. Helena Raidner. Jake LePage is 13. Tommy Lee is 9. Karen Richards is 30. And Stuart Heaven. So happy birthday, everyone. And the total raise is 44,807. Um, so yeah, thank you. I hope you've had a good birthday. And yeah, it's been great to be here. <laughs> Thank you. I paid her to say that. <laughs> so this is the uh, after summer party. <laughs> Everyone's got COVID. We drafted James in. We've rented a crowd. <laughs> Good luck, Hannah, in Australia. But Liv's, we're going to have another one tomorrow for Liv. And then the main one is the 26th of September, the night before Cheshire Plowing Match at, is it Studi Studio Nantwich? Studio Nantwich. So check it out. We'll all be there. And a few others that you may know as well. Liv and Hannah are going in the field with the fast track to take some pictures. But um, yeah, that is all for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully get a little bit better weather. We can get on with a bit more cutting these beans that are now ready. So see you later.